right, y'all, so here we are. We're out at the uh, steer barn again. I just wanted to um, take a little bit to talk about this barn a little bit more in depth. It seems to be a pretty popular topic um, for people, and I know some people were wondering uh, what we like about it and what we don't like. Um, so we're standing here on the outside. One of the things that we like about it, um, and we would uh, definitely do again, are the curtains. Um, they're very low maintenance. Uh, it doesn't take much to keep after them. Um, and th I think uh, the people that put them in for us, there's a 10-year warranty on them. But it's a, a very quick job to replace them if something would get torn. Um, some of the things that you have to, to think about is just um, tightening up the straps. Um, so you want them to snap like that. Um, and that's just a quick ratchet job. Uh, and then also just to keep them clean, you want to uh, roll them down. We have them rolled down here. Um, so it's pretty, pretty simple, um, easy to open it up uh, to allow for air to flow through the barn. Um, we didn't have to have any fans in the barn this year at all. Um, and it was a pretty hot summer uh, because we were able to open the curtains up and let the air just uh, blow through. And even if there wasn't an air, um, it created a, an air current um, just by having the ability to have three ends open or, or all, um, all the sides open. Um, at the same time, uh, we're, we're able to close them when it rains to keep the dampness out if we need to. Um, close them in the winter uh, to keep it warmer in here. Some of the things uh, to think about inside the barn, um, one of the things we probably would have done is uh, make this about five feet taller. Uh, what that would have allowed us to do is uh, use it for storage more if we're not uh, filled up with cattle or um, Angus or whatever we have in here. Um, we could use it for storage for bales. We could use it for storage for some of our equipment. Um, so that's one of the things that uh, we would have changed. Uh, when we built the barn, um, we were trying to keep costs down, so um, we did just a, a complete concrete floor. Um, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell here, but um, you can see it's kind of been uh, licked by the cattle. Um, it's rough there, whereas it's nice and smooth over here. Um, so one of the things we would have changed here is we would have put uh, a tile or a, a stainless steel um, in uh, where we do the feeding. So as I kind of mentioned, um, we did design this barn so that it could be utilized for different uh, operations. Um, right now we're doing the uh, cow and calf operation, but uh, we could switch over to uh, pen pack sows or um, make it into um, a dairy operation as well. Um, it would be easy, easy to convert. Uh, one of the things that we did think about is we made it big enough that um, over the summer we were able to just do pen pack um, and not have to clean, clean out any of our manure um, other than that, uh, the stuff that was up in the um, front where the feed lot is. But, um, down here in this pen down here, all this, um, we did not clean this, uh, this stall out at all this year. Um, we're just waiting for the, we just kept putting more on top, but we're waiting for the soybeans to come off and then this will be our uh, fertilizer for our corn ground next year. Um, so we didn't really have a, a manure storage area here on this farm, so that's what we decided to do and how we uh, designed the barn a little bit to meet that need as well. Um, another thing that you want to think about if you're going to build a, uh, a barn um, for animals is the kind of um, rail that you put in the feedlot. So obviously the cheapest way to go is a, um, a single rail like this here. Um, however, when you have this kind of rail, you have to be... Um, aware that some of your smaller animals will be able to get out of that. Um, that's one of the reasons that we put in the slanted rails up here. Uh, that way we can keep our smaller animals up here if we need to and um, eventually we'll probably convert the entire barn to this type of rail. Uh, 
But at this point, um, we're just kind of waiting uh, to do that. The other thing that you have to think about is uh, how you're going to feed. Um, we decided to use a TMR mixer, which is why we made the feed lot a little bit wider so that we could fit the TMR mixer down through here and be able just to um, to pour it out onto the um, feed lot. Um, we decided not to put a, um, a trough in. Uh, because we don't mind uh, making the kids come out here and sweep it up or sweeping it up a little bit. Makes it easier to um, clean out. You might want to put like a, a backstop for the feed lot in. Um, just a thought. One of the things that we did do that I'm not sure is uh, going to be very useful for us right now is to put these headlocks in. We were thinking that uh, by putting those in, we were, we'd be able to uh, give injections and stuff. And it works okay for smaller animals. But when you get the larger um, cows and heifers, uh, it does not work quite as well. Um, so we may use those for smaller animals. Um, they are a nice uh, idea. But uh, I think eventually we're going to build a corral out in the back and that'll be able to uh, give us the ability to work with the animals a little bit better out there. We did make a curb um, for the uh, cows to eat at. Um, we'd probably make this about two, two and a half inches uh, higher if we had to do it over again. Um, reason being is that um, when they come up to eat, the food is right there um, and ready for them to eat. Uh, they don't have to lift their head up. Um, I'll just come over here. And, um, you know, every time they lift their head up, there's less eating. So um, it's right there for them to eat. Um, helps them put on weight a little bit quicker. Um, so that's why we did the, the curb. Um, And uh, I'm going to walk around back here. Oh, I did want to say, um, just make sure if you're, you're building a cattle barn that you have your waters laid out where you want them. All of our, um, our water is underground, so we don't have to worry about freezing. We have a frost-free hydrant here on the end. Um, and our water line does come out like right here. Um, our well is right beside. So that made it nice. Um, one thing we probably would do is uh, put a waterer um, over on this side where our uh, fence goes across to the pasture um, and maybe one up in the pasture as well. Uh, reason being is uh, if the farmer would need to work uh, in the barn and want the uh, Angus out or the animals out of the barn, um, they'd at least have water up here. So. Here is another shot of our walkway from the barn up to the pasture. We did make it wide enough that we could get some equipment in here, um, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and we have the fencing here just to go up to the pasture. Uh, here's just another shot of the barn from up above. We um, did position the barn so that um, we can block the wind from the west. Um, the west is over over um, this way. Um, that way um, we can either block it if we need to in the winter or open it up in the summer and it just draws the air through. Um, plans are uh, to build a, another barn here in front, a 40 by 100 foot barn. Um, and we can use that for a calving barn if we need to, um, if the if we don't have the pasture available, or we can. Er, and um, we're also going to be putting a corral in that barn. Um, we do have a little bit of work to do on that yet. Um, obviously, we have to uh, jackhammer out uh, what used to be um, where a silo was, um, and get that done as well. So. Yeah, just an overview of the barn, what we like about it, what we would probably do a little bit differently, and uh, some renovations that we're planning on doing on it as well. 
or additions, I guess you should say. I should say. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. And as always, have a great day.